And if AI is right, and you and I have found carved mastodons in the Andes of Colombia, this could potentially completely rewrite the history of the Ice Age in the Americas. Look at it. There's the eye and the bump on the head and the trunk coming down the curve along the front there, see? It would mean these people weren't just surviving, hunting and gathering. It would mean that they had developed a relationship with animals extending far beyond utility and showing an expression of artistic and creative knowledge hitherto undiscovered or unacknowledged. And it goes up to the raised cranium with the hump on the back and the trunk comes all the way down the front here. That to me is a mastodon. Digital forensics have just confirmed that we have indeed found two carved mastodons. I honestly think we're the first two men in probably 10,000 years that have been here hunted mastodons. And this is the last of the megafauna hunters. Yeah. All right, dude, let's go. Careful as you go, that's a wild um, incline. Look at that, it's virtually vertical. Yeah, this is difficult going, man. I'm gonna try and come up with the tripod and the camera. That means I don't have many hands left. I'm here if you need some help, man. Okay, just trying to catch how steep this is for the, the folks watching. Jay and I have explored in the cave, we found another bone. It's the second bone of the day to go with the tooth that we found in the first rock shelter. And we're now heading back to the mastodon and the cub that featured in an earlier documentary, which is linked there in the top right of the screen. But getting there, as usual, it's not gonna be easy. Make that pass you the tripod. Yes. Do you want to take the camera as well? Yeah. Um, yeah, because that's got spines on it, mate. Do not grab that. Look at the, what we're up against. Look at these spines, as Jay's just pointed out. I was about to grab that. Don't grab that. Seen them? Yeah, yeah, don't, don't. Just grab that. horrible. Mother nature's nastiness. Yeah, that's not kind. Look at it. That's what I grabbed when we were at Elabra, remember? Yeah. It took three weeks for them to come out of my finger. Yeah, don't do that, okay. Okay. How far is it? Probably about three metres. Oh, really? Here you go. Oh, look at it. In all its glory. Look at that. In all its prehistoric glory. And there's the eye. And the bump on the head and the trunk coming down the curve along the front there, see? Look at it. Even got the, the hump on the back, the energy storing hump. In 219, deep in Colombia's Andes, we uncovered colossal stone sculptures of extinct reptiles and megafauna that once roamed the Bogota savanna during the Younger Dryas over 12,000 years ago. Last year, our search led us to two massive stones perched on a nearby mountain overlooking the site. Their shapes were unmistakable mimicking the profile of mastodons. Beneath them, hidden in a cave, we discovered a fragile ceramic pot and single bone, suggesting these zoomorphic forms served a ritual purpose. To investigate further, we used artificial intelligence to analyze our footage. The AI replied, its clearly defined dorsal ridge, cranial dome, trunk-like projection, and ocular depression imply intentional shaping to create a zoomorphic figure, suggestive of elephants, mammoths, and mastodons. 
Supporting this, Notio Mastodon remains were excavated nearby at Elabra in the 1960s, radiocarbon dated to 10,400 BC. Oh, we're high. There's Tenno and Elmahoy. And this was all filled with water in the younger Dryas, known as Lake Bogota or Lake Humboldt, named after the famous explorer Alexander von Humboldt. You can see the eye here. And it goes up to the raised cranium with the hump in the back and the trunk comes all the way down the front here to where Jay is at a section of rock that's been quite obviously cleared and curved almost to form a rock shelter here. What's your magnifying glass doing Jay? I'm looking at what I believe to be tool marks. Some evidence of tools that we used here on this rock to chisel it out. Really? And I'm seeing quite a lot of them. It seems to be quite clear. Okay, show me some tool marks. See this? Oh wow, yes. There's one. Hold on. Yes, that vertical. Yeah. Hold on, I need to try and focus. Hold, you hold your thing still. Right, I've got it. That looks like a tool mark, Jim. Okay, now if we move across to the right, uh -huh. slowly, we've got some horizontal ones here as well. Oh yeah. And they're not new. They're not new, they're ancient one. And we've got some more just up here that would suggest it's been chiseled down. And then- Right, hold it right on that vertical one. I want to film that close up. Is that as close as you can go? Right, one minute. There, let me film that. See it there, the, ver the double vertical lines? Yeah. Okay, that is a tool mark. And we're seeing more as we come across to the left. There's more evidence here. And Jay, supporting what you've just said, look here, look at this. Yeah. All of these marks are coming down. Yeah. There's nothing coming up suggesting these are chisel marks. Yeah. Clearing this curved section away. Here as well, look. Yeah. The, these have been, it's where it's been chipped down. Yep. We've got more down the bottom here. Yep. That's a pattern for sure. Yeah, that definitely suggests that's been worked by, by the hand of man. To, to create the bottom of the trunk, which we're, where we're at, and there's the eye. Look there. Ah, oh, look at this. What an incredible stone. Well, that indented eye with the raised eyebrow above it and then the cranial, um, the, what do you call it? They would call it the raised cranium. Dome. The dome. That life size? Probably about life size of a giant specimen, but you feel just so haunted by the size of it when you're below Humble, it. Humble, think's the word. Humble, that's it. Just the way a hunter would have felt when faced with the real creature. I mean, the thing is, it has, it has the mark where the ear would be as well. I mean, it's so detailed. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's go up to the top and see if we can film the cub again. Let's go, man. Let's look at that for tool marks as well. Right, let's go. Jay and I are back at the two stones which look awfully a lot like mastodons. The largest example that which we think is the mother and then up here behind it oh no gee it's been destroyed yeah someone's graffitied it mate no it's got graffiti oh no but i think we can still see the evidence there on the front of it it's, it's just on this uh and it's only spray paint man it's it doesn't matter somebody's done that what, gee, what does solo mijos mean? Mijonarios is the, some crappy football team from Bogota. <sighs> because look, yeah. here's where we found this, ow, this smoothing. What they haven't done is this bit though. This is the important bit, and here. That has been smoothed and flattened. You can see it been rubbed in there and there's a, yeah. a carved line right here to give it that curved trunk impression with the eye and what might be the ear there. 
and that again that big bump on top of the mammoth's head it's got the crown on its head and th those are definitely lines on the front it's unquestionable yeah that here come and get a close-up jake and you get a close-up this line where the trunk would be there we go see there right there that's been smooth see how smooth this is feel it yeah that's been rough feel that and then it's all rough. There's no other smoothing at all on this entire face, but where they needed to make that a trunk. That's been rubbed down. That, that's like a marble, man. That's Isn't it just like a marble? Yeah, it's like a marble, man. It's so smooth. That one patch where there was maybe an obtrusion that stopped it looking like a trunk. But that has been smooth. Look at the top of the heads, like the one we saw down there, that spike that goes up. This is why these sites need protection, but no, no one's willing to make that effort, that extra two steps just to, just to protect the things. No one's willing to do it, and it's such a tragedy. It's anti-culture. If Jay and I are right, and this rock was carved somewhere between 12 and 16,000 years ago, it's just horrific to think that in our generation, people can fire up with a blue and white can of spray paint and just not destroy it's not destroyed it'll be gone within a few months with the weather but it's just so ignorant it's defacing isn't it it's just so horrific so here's what we identify as the bastodon cub the eye here indented like the version below the mother the rounded trunk coming down the front here the raised bump on the cranium the hump on the back coming down to where the tail would be, where Jay's standing there. And you can see the outline of a hind leg and a fore leg. And this, there it is, that's probably the best angle to see it right there as you're passing it on the path. Digital forensics have just confirmed that we have indeed found two carved mastodons. The question is, how many more of these enormous creatures were carved in the Colombian Andes? We have found hardcore archaeology lost in the Andean highlands of Colombia. We discovered this. Look at the archaeology. It's just incredible. Oh, it's dangerous. What you guys may have discovered may rewrite so many things. Look at this. Oh, look at the artwork. 